Hi, I'm going to be talking about how to optimize hierarchical queries for the attribution reporting API. This is joint work with a number of colleagues at Google. The attribution reporting API is a privacy preserving tool for ad conversion measurement on the Chrome and Android platforms. The traditional approach for ad conversion measurement uses third party cookies. But due to user privacy concerns, a number of browsers are deprecating the use of third party cookies. The attribution reporting API can produce aggregate statistics about conversion attribution without using persistent cross-site identifiers. The summary reports produced satisfy differential privacy. So noise is added to limit how much can be inferred about individual impressions. We have a level of noise and resulting privacy guarantee are controlled by a parameter epsilon. We want to estimate the number of conversions attributed to impressions with a certain combination of features. For example, Given this data set of clicks that occurred in different ad campaigns at different locations and days, we can ask how many conversions were attributed to impressions from campaign 123 and took place in Los Angeles last Friday. More generally, we can ask for each city and day of the campaign how many attributed conversions were there. We can also ask what is the total number of attributed conversions for campaign 123, or what is the total number in Los Angeles? So given a tree that branches on a combination of impressions and conversion features, we want to estimate the total number of conversions corresponding to each node in the tree. The error metric we study is a thresholded version of root mean squared relative error, averaged over all the levels of the tree. But the algorithms we present work just as well with a variety of other error metrics. Our algorithms satisfy differential privacy which provides worst case guarantees about how much an adversary can infer about any individual data record. The privacy level is controlled by a parameter epsilon, where smaller epsilon corresponds to a higher level of privacy. For counting queries such as these, we can satisfy epsilon differential privacy by adding noise of scale one over epsilon from a Laplace distribution, which can be done using the attribution reporting API. The hierarchical queries we will be asking sometimes issue multiple queries that involve the same data record. For example, a click that occurred in campaign 123 on Los Angeles on Friday would be counted as part of the yellow node at the bottom here, but also would be counted in the green node above it and the two red nodes above that. Differential privacy guarantees that if we run multiple algorithms that are differentially private, their combination is also differentially private with a privacy parameter that's the sum of the parameters for the individual algorithms. So for the queries that we issue in the tree, queries to different nodes at the same level touch disjoint subsets of the data. So we don't have to account for this here. But queries to nodes at different levels may touch the same data record. What this means is given a total privacy budget, we can split it into, the, into separate privacy budgets for the different levels of the tree so that the sum of these privacy budgets is our total budget epsilon. And then we can issue queries to level i of the tree, adding noise 1 over epsilon sub i to each such query. We want to know how can we obtain estimates for hierarchical queries that have minimum possible error and are consistent with one another when we ask interrelated queries. We present two main results. First, a post-processing algorithm that improves the error of each estimate and ensures consistency with the tree. And secondly, a procedure for optimizing the allocation of the privacy budget among the levels of the tree. When we ask interrelated queries, sometimes they have relationships between them. For example, the total number of clicks in campaign 123 must equal the sum of the number of clicks of campaign 123 in each region where the campaign was active. Or more generally, for every node in the tree, the value of that node should equal the sum of the values of the children. And the sum of the values of the, of the estimates of the children provides an independent estimate for the value of the parent. When we have independent estimates of the same quantity, we can combine them to obtain other independent estimates by taking convex combinations of them. And the optimal convex combination has weights inversely proportional to the variance of the two estimates and yields an estimate that has lower error than either original estimate. 
So this allows us to improve the error when we have individual multiple individual estimates of the same quantity. But all of the estimates in this tree have a, have a more complicated set of relationships. So we want to optimally take into account all of the constraints encoded in the tree. And I'm now going to present our algorithm for this. So we start out with independent estimates of the count of each node in the tree and the corresponding variances. We're first going to do a bottom-up pass from the bottom of the tree up to the top. So for each node, we're going to look at the estimate of that node and the sum of the recursively computed estimates of its children. And we're going to take the minimum, the optimal convex combination of those two estimates. So we're going to compute this new estimate of the value of the node and its variance. And we're going to do this from the bottom of the tree all the way up to the root. And this gives us the optimal estimate of the value of every node based on the estimate of that node and each of its children. But we also get information about a value of its node from the estimate of its parent and its siblings and other nodes higher in the tree and in other parts of the tree. So to take that into account, we do a second pass through the tree. So starting at the root and going down to the nodes just above the leaves, we're going to adjust the estimates of the children to guarantee consistency. So we're going to look at the discrepancy between the estimate of each node and the sum of the estimates of its children. And we're going to apportion the, the difference between these two estimates among the children proportionally to the variance of each child estimate. So this will ensure that for every node of the tree, the value of that node will equal the sum of the values of the children. And it turns out it also improves the error of each of the estimates in the tree. And then we're going to output the final estimates after these two passes through the tree. And that's the algorithm. And we can show that this algorithm is optimal in the sense that it computes the best linear unbiased estimator given the original estimates. It also does not use additional privacy budget. So we're only using the original noisy estimates of each node in the tree. And we're producing estimates for, for lower error without any additional privacy leakage. So we're getting a better trade-off between privacy and accuracy. We're also getting consistent estimates. So the value of every node will now equal the sum of the values of its children. And this is a linear time algorithm, so it's very efficient and can be extended to compute not just the estimates, but also the variances of each estimate. This algorithm extends the methods of Hayat al and Kormod et al which apply to regular trees, whereas our method works for arbitrary trees. And it's also related to the powerful and more general matrix mechanism for differential privacy, which in general requires at least quadratic time. So this tells us, given a set of estimates, how can we opti optimally make use of them to get the best estimates and consistent estimates? Uh, resulting from our original estimates, but which measurements should we take? So now we're going to talk about, given a total privacy budget, how should we split it among the levels of the tree? There are many ways to do this. We could put all of our privacy budget on the leaves of the tree, only estimate the leaves and infer the other counts by adding the appropriate combination of the leaves. Or we could split our privacy budget equally between the different levels of the tree, or there's many other strategies we can use. So. If we have even noisy historical data or prior on the data distribution, we can evaluate these different options to choose the best budgeting strategy, the best split of our privacy budget epsilon among the levels of the tree. In this work, we take a simple greedy approach where we take the total privacy budget and divide it into some number of K of increments. And then we proceed iteratively in each iteration we allocate epsilon over k additional privacy budget to the level that most decreases the overall error after post-processing. So then after k iterations, we have an allocation of the privacy budget epsilon to the levels of the tree that has a good error. So we evaluate these two algorithms on two public Criteo datasets, the sponsored search conversion log dataset and the attribute modeling for bidding dataset. For each data set, we selected a set of attributes to construct our hierarchy. And we split the data sets into budgeting data and test data based on click time 
so that we can perform budgeting on entirely separate data than the data used to evaluate. For each data set, we compared five approaches, an equal budget split among the levels of the tree with and without post-processing, putting all the privacy budget on the leaves and then inferring using post-processing the estimates of the other levels of the tree, and our optimized approach for per-level privacy budgets with and without post-processing. Our results show that our optimized approach consistently outperforms the other methods, sometimes by a substantial margin. Moreover, the other methods uh, perform better or worse on different data sets, so there's not a clear second best method to use. Um, in some settings, putting all privacy budget on leaves, for example, performs quite well, but in others it doesn't. But our combination of optimizing the allocation of the privacy budget and using this post-processing algorithm to achieve consistency and improve the error of each estimate outperforms the other methods and results in fairly accurate estimation of conversion values. Thank you.